What's up guys? Today's video is going to be a little different. It's one of the panels that I moderated at Dragon Con between me and Jonas Swatamo, whose name I asked him how to pronounce and I probably still got it wrong, but he is the actor who played Chewbacca in part of The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and Solo A Star Wars Story. So this is just that hour-long panel. I interview him for about half an hour and then we turn it over to audience Q&A. Uh, we didn't have the, the audio for the audience section, so I had to put just subtitles for the questions being asked. Also, our camera battery died halfway through, so you'll notice that there's a point where we lost video, had to swap out cameras. Uh, that's just what happened there, but uh, I wanted to give you guys a look at the panel because it was a lot of fun and obviously a huge honor to sit down and talk with Jonas, but uh, here it is. What's up, Dragon Con? <laughs> My name is Alex. I'm from a YouTube channel called Star Wars Explained. I talk about Star Wars a lot. I'm going to bring Jonas out in just a second. I'm going to try to get through some questions to get the ball rolling and try to leave about half the time for audience Q&A. Um, but yeah, I don't want to waste too much time up front. We just want to talk to Jonas. So please welcome Chewbacca, Jonas Swatamo. <laughs> How's it going, man? Good. How'd I do on your name? You, um, we have to talk about it afterwards. That's fine. That's fine. Which one is mine? Hello? Probably that one. <laughs> Hello? Can everyone hear me? <laughs> it's not my fault. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonas, welcome to Dragon Con. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. How's it going so far? Yeah, uh, it's, been, it's been great. The fans, they're, uh, there's a multitude of fans. And, uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm just going to dive into questions, and I'm sorry. I'm going to hit you with something really hard right now, but did Chewie eat that porg in The Last Jedi? Okay. You said there weren't going to be any hard questions. Uh, well, I don't know, but it looked pretty dead, didn't it? So I guess that what, that's what counts. Um, but he didn't eat it, I don't think. I think, uh, I think uh, Chewie, uh, you know... He, 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 felt, uh, he felt the stare and uh, chose not to eat it. Felt too guilty. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you saw the movie. Nothing happened after, after that scene was cut. Uh, we cut away. Nothing happened. I swear. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Hard questions out of the way. Um, but we have another movie coming out. So could you just like real quick tell us what happens in episode nine? <laughs> episode nine? Yeah. Oh, sure. Uh, so what, what happens is... Why, am, why do I have two now? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it because, uh, never mind. Um, so episode nine, I'm sure everyone saw the latest D23 special trailer that came out. <laughs> Woo! I mean, I mean, pretty, pretty cool to um, finally be closer and closer to uh, getting this movie in December. I'm, 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 I'm super excited. Um, but I can't, I don't want to give away too much, you know, but here's basically what happens. So, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, once again, I was excited to get called in and I was super excited because J.J. Abrams was coming back to finish off the trilogy and uh, he, he's always such a blast to work with and uh, as a fan of Star Wars, I was, I was triple happy that uh, he, he was coming back and, and the, the script after I read it, my mind was blown. I shed a few tears. I don't know if it was because I recently became a dad. So maybe, maybe it was that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, being a dad and playing Chewbacca, I don't know. There's two things that uh, mixes like, like chocolate and ice cream. I don't know. <laughs> it's good. Um, yeah. Was that the question though? Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> I always want to answer the question. <laughs> well, in just, I know you can't say much, but in the vaguest of terms, how do you feel about Chewie's role in Nine? Uh, are, are you excited for people to see it? I'm really excited. There's some, there some cool stuff that I didn't get to do before, and, uh, and I think it's gonna be, be eye-opening. It's gonna be the final chapter to this 
to, to what we've seen so far regarding these episodes. And uh, yeah, I think it's just gonna, uh, we're gonna go out, uh, like this, this story will finish with a bang. And uh, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. That sounds promising. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it sounds like a lot of the cast was seeing that D23 footage for the first time alongside all of us. Uh, what in that footage caught your eye? What surprised you? Well, the first time I saw it, I didn't actually see it. We walked backstage at that D23, and then I had to look from, like, they had a camera in the hall, hall look, uh, filming. It, it was so it was the most tiniest of screens that I saw at first time. I was like, what? What's that lightsaber that Ray's holding? And I was because I hadn't seen it before. Um, but then I watched it afterwards. It came online, because uh, yeah, yeah, and it was it was just uh, yeah. My I, I loved I loved the big fleet, and I loved the I loved the music, and it's gonna be it's gonna be epic. Uh, that's what they say, and that's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Billy we, kept saying epic. So. <laughs> Well, Great to have Billy D. Williams back, by the way. That, that was yeah. exactly my next question. How does, how does Chewie feel to be sitting alongside Lando now uh, as he pilots the Millennium Falcon again? I, th I, I think it's uh, after, after losing his best friend, I think he's now, he's now happy that there is, you know, somebody who he knows and from a long time ago and, and somebody, you know, I think it's, that's a good thing. So you're going to... I think this is going to be, that part of the story is going to be a nostalgia trip and it's going to be warming our hearts. And as a fan, what was it like now getting to work with Billy D for the first time? Billy was amazing. He was such a cool breeze, breeze of a person, you know. He, he just comes in the room and doesn't, you know, doesn't need anything. He's just there and, uh, and, uh, and everybody, everybody loved having him around. Uh, I'm, I geeked out a little bit, and uh, I tried to keep my cool, but I failed. <laughs> but he, he really, uh, I think he loved to be back, and he loved uh, piloting the Falcon. I can't blame him. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing to get to fly that thing. Well, getting to work alongside legends like Billy Dee and Harrison Ford, I saw in an interview once that you learned some Shri Wook specifically to impress Harrison Ford the mm. first time you met him. Oh, yeah. I really would love to know his reaction, and was he impressed? Uh, he, he was sort of, he looked at me, <gasps> and, and walked away, you know? <laughs> that, that was, I remember that was his reaction. Whenever I did something, he kind of, <laughs> so you're the funniest man in Finland, huh? <laughs> and walked away. <clears throat> He, so he was he, very impressed. He really, he really bought that funniest man in Finland story that I told. <laughs> but I, yeah, but uh, yeah, we. Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was amazing to. I remember introducing my own dad, who would introduced me to Indiana Jones and Star Wars. Way too young, I'd say, when I was like five or six. So thanks, Dad. Uh, but really, l love you, Dad, because. Um, <laughs> Uh, I got to see those movies, and then I was really excited to get to introduce my dad to Harrison Ford. And it, Harrison was a real gentleman, uh, really, uh, really, really fun to introduce a legend to your dad, and, and uh, he, he took it well. So you were introduced to Star Wars when you were five or six. Yeah. What about the movie made you fall in love with it? I think it was... I think it was all, well, first of all, Luke Skywalker. I thought I was Luke Skywalker because I had blonde hair. I didn't know I was that tall, you know, <laughs> growing up. Because my brothers were always much taller than me because they were older. And then when I grew past them, I started to pity them. I thought, <laughs> oh, how? They're just going to stay six foot five? Oh. <laughs> poor older brother, poor you. Is there anything I can do? And, that's my. That's how my mind worked. Uh, <laughs> that is not how you should feel about. You know, we're we're all different, but we're all. You know, we're all the same. Was that's what there, I say. Was there ever any point in your Star Wars fandom where you started to relate to Chewie before you got cast? Uh, I. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, and I think I think the first time that I really 
that I actually didn't know that I didn't know who was inside the Chewbacca suit until college. I remember Googling uh, Peter Mayhew uh, when I was in, sitting in my dorm room in college. I don't know why. Maybe I had too much time on my hands. My grades were su suffering. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, but yeah, I I did not see myself. I, I didn't see myself, you know, as someone who. Um, I remember when 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 I learned about the casting that it was going on, they called me and said, "Would you like to apply for this role?" And I remember doubting myself a little bit, that I didn't know if it was going to be, uh, if I had the right physique or you know, what they were looking for, but it ended up being much more about what you do with your body and uh, how, you, how you play the character. Because when you're in the first suit, that kind of, it's very forgiving uh, in terms of your looks. You know, I can look like this, <laughs> being in the mask, so that's wonderful. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I can totally uh, see myself now, but I, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't imagine what m wonders that suit makes for your appearances. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I encourage everyone to try out a Chewbacca suit if you, if you, if you want to be, be a Wookiee, yeah. Uh, so you have mentioned that your father introduced you to Star Wars, and now you already said you have a baby Baca. Mm, uh, yeah. How has that been introducing your son to Star Wars in uh, an age-appropriate way so far? I mean, I mean, it's almost this movie, when we were filming this, it all became a little bit of a blur because I had the fatherly responsibilities at the same time. So every, after every uh, day of filming, I rushed back home to help with the, with putting putting a baby to sleep or whatever. You know, I, gra granted, I wasn't much help because we're 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 dads. So we, I mean, if if the baby is, you know, a lot with the mother, you know, it's difficult to. I'm just a, I'm just a third wheel at that point. <laughs> But it was it was, it's it's been it's been uh, great because, baby Baca or Atos, my my son, he loves, he loves. I think he loves the the, the characters, and uh, especially especially Chewbacca. And uh, when he came on set, we took a picture. They were it was shown at Star Wars cel uh, Celebration, and uh, he just came came on set with his bunny ears costume, and then uh, he saw me. I was in in the mask. And I, I told him, I, I made, made the sounds that I make when I'm with him, like, where's daddy, where's daddy? And, uh, and so he recognized me, and uh, I was able to, able to have some fun with him, and he wasn't scared of the suit, which I was afraid of uh, in the beginning. I thought he probably might break down crying, but maybe nowadays he would when, he, when he's a little bit older. He's 18 months now. Maybe now he would, like, don't touch me, dad. <laughs> <laughs> But at least, uh, yeah, when we were filming, he was, he was fine with it. That's great. So Chewie as a character has been in all three Star Wars trilogies at this point, and he has now seen three generations of Skywalkers just messing up the galaxy. Is Chewie just done what with the Skywalkers? What is up with that family, I ask you? Yeah. Are, I mean, is he done with them? I mean, yeah. Like, where are the manners? What, what do they teach at, at that, in that? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think the Skywalkers there, they are a source of many problems. And I would not, you know, unless I was forced to help them, I would, I would not, I would steer clear <laughs> of this family. Lots of problems. So, uh, <laughs> but they do have that, what's that thing, force? So, yeah, good guys. All in all, good guys. I'd say. Don't tell them I, yeah, nothing but good. All the love coming even, from even here. Even Kylo Ren. Uh, Kylo Ren, huh? He's uh, he's the mixed bag too. Uh, yeah, I can't. I mean, it's just like, it's just like crazy how how lucky we are as Star Wars fans to be getting. I know it's, it seems crazy that I'm saying this, but really, I do feel like, like imagine 20 years ago when we were waiting for episode one and two and three, it was like, so, it was different because you knew that those were gonna be the last. You wouldn't get any anymore, right? You were thinking that. And, uh, and now we're getting this and, and maybe more, hopefully more. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing, amazing time to be alive in that sense. Well, yeah, I mean, we're getting anthologies and spinoffs and Disney Plus series and exactly. I saw in an interview uh, with you and Alden 
that there, at least in Solo, a Star Wars story, there were written lines for Chewie, and uh, I think you guys said that he swears a lot. Is is that true, or mm. was that a joke? Oh, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's a potty mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Do you have any favorite line that uh, was written in the script that Chewie did deliver, but we as fans, we didn't know what he was saying. Well, I won't say what it is, but <laughs> when, when, they, when they land on the mountaintop and when Beckett uh, says, do you have any idea what, what you just did? Like when the coaxium explodes and then, and then he tells them that the, the, uh, the coaxium belonged or the, the heist belonged to the group of gangster a gangster mob called uh, called the uh, oh what was the name Crimson, Crimson Dawn. Dawn yeah you got it and then Chewie is in the background he's going oh so <laughs> you can imagine what I said and they <laughs> oh uh, yeah it's the F word so <laughs> bad Chewie bad Chewie <laughs> apparently Ron Howard loved that line so much he kept it until the last stages of the mix until he replaced it, and it no longer received laughs. Like, when they were f mixing that film, they were laughing every time that part came up. And, and I, can't, I, can't, I can relate, because it's funny. <laughs> yeah, we were just, uh, we, we had been flown on the mountaintop with helicopters, and we were filming, you know, in the snow, and the, you, couldn't go, go to, you couldn't go to the bathroom, because it was like, you had to take a half a mile hike in, in deep snow. And if you wanted to, so you just, just stayed on the mountaintop and tried not to drink water. And then I got dehydrated. And uh, maybe that, uh, that, all of that sort of brought together my, my, uh, my anger in that moment. I don't know. <laughs> it, was the, it was the conditions, you know. So of the four Star Wars movies that you now have under your belt or, or bandolier, which was the most fun to film and which was the most challenging? Right. I'm, I don't, it's, it's, diff it's difficult to put them, put them in order because every one I've been doing, I've been sort of magically, oh, I can't wait to see this one on screen. I've been excited about all of them. But I guess the, the latest one, uh, Rise of Skywalker, was, was the most fun. And then most challenging was definitely Solo because there were so many days... Uh, so many the mud mud fight scene was was a was a real challenge to do because of the 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 very very wet but when when it uh, dried up the mud turned into this powder so it went and it seeped into all of your if you had any clothes you brought during like you came if you came in with a jacket and it was very cold when we started filming like in January 2017 and uh, you came in with the with the with a jacket, and you hang, hung it up in the tent, in the in the soundstage, and it would just like at the end of the day, it would have this powdery uh, white stuff. It was a black Can Can Canada Goose jacket, and I was looking forward to stealing that <laughs> at the end of the shoot. But it was full of that white stuff, and you couldn't get it off. It, even in my rubber boots that I used to go re at rehearsals on that mud pit. It was, they were uh, full of that white stuff. Those I stole because I can't find rubber uh, boots anywhere. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're disgusting and I can't wear them. Unless I go picking mushrooms or something and nobody can see. But um, I, I don't pick mushrooms. I should. I should know more about mushrooms. But uh, yeah, next question, please. <laughs> Uh, I saw in another interview uh, for Solo, A Star Wars Story that I think you self-described yourself as the biggest Star Wars nerd on that set. Is that true? Oh, well, probably true. Yeah. I mean, who did we have? We had Amelia Clark, uh, Childish Gambino, Woody Harrelson, Alden. I think I was the biggest nerd. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> what, what was your fandom like growing up? Uh, like you mentioned, waiting for the prequels and thinking they were going to be the last ones. Like, how involved were you in the fandom as you uh, were in the 90s and early 2000s? Well, I was looking forward. I was really excited about all the, all the stuff that came out. I was really, I loved Lord of the Rings. I loved Star Wars. Uh, those, those were my two, two big uh, life-changing movies, I think. 
Was it, did I say something? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, yeah, so I was, I wasn't, what do you, if you mean heavily involved, I didn't make costumes, I didn't have the talent to uh, make my own costumes, but I was, I was really excited about it. Yeah. Did you ever read any of the books back in the day? I, did, I didn't read a lot of the books. I remember watching the Empire, uh, Dark Empire comics. I reading that and Luke turning the, to the dark side, I think. So that was exciting. And uh, yeah, so good stuff. I loved it. But, but I always thought that the movies were, were of course, the, the, they were the, uh, the, the, the biggest, biggest thing out there in terms of Star Wars. But I did uh, read a little bit. I think in Finland it's harder to get these comics, so not, there aren't a lot of comic stores in Finland. So I was deprived of a lot. I blame my childhood. <laughs> I'm really just curious if anyone's ever told you what happens to Chewie in those old books. Yeah, they, they, someone mentioned it. Something about a moon and a, and a horrific accident. I wanted to make sure you don't like go to any moons, you don't get into any fights in any moons oh, in episode nine. Like. Just like Skywalkers in the future, I steer clear of moons, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love Skywalkers. <laughs> uh, well, I am curious if you could just like help me out because I'm hopefully competing in the Star Wars trivia contest here in just two days. And okay. I, I'm still studying, so if you could just like give me your favorite piece of Star Wars trivia for Chewie, uh, or if you want to try to stump me in front of all these people and embarrass me, I'll take that too. Okay, well, I answered zero out of three uh, when it came to, I was, we were at the D23, they had, was it Disney Channel or something? They asked me about Star Wars or, or something, and I answered zero out of three, correct. <laughs> so I don't think, uh, and those were hard questions. They were like really, really, they gave me three options and I was like, whoa. <laughs> Everything went wrong. Uh, yeah, I'm not, the, I'm not, I should be better. I will improve, but. Uh, oh, no judgment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think I, I, you, you, will, uh, you will be fine because you're Star Wars explained, right? I've, I've never won. I've You've never, never won? won? No. <laughs> I need help. Maybe, you're, <laughs> maybe your talents are in the um, uh, packaging that information and telling people about it, right? I guess it's not in winning trivia. Because <laughs> trivia is a different ball game, you know, I think. But you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> well, I've been impressed in all your interviews. Like, you, you seem to know quite a bit about Chewie. Like, anytime someone says the word Shriwook, I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, but those are, that's the language that my character speaks. So, yeah. But, but uh, I, I should know more. I should know more. You're fine. I'm excited to know more. I'm excited to... <laughs> When my uh, Ch when Chewbacca the solo uh, no when Chewbacca standalone movie if ever uh, if, if if it ever comes you know I'm gonna study up on my I've Chewbacca got a YouTube things. channel for you if you need some help um, I do need some help <laughs> How would you grade Alden's Shriwa compared to yours Because I know he studied under you a bit Yeah he he he, uh, he asked me like teach me some Shriwa and I, as if I knew and I was like okay I'll teach you some Shriwa um, uh, and then, and he was really into it, and he wanted to know how I do how I do the voices, and so I just like I, I tell everybody, I just it's just a tongue trill like, and and a moan, and then and then some some yawning t uh, influenced uh, moans like, that's that's the gist of it. And then, and then, yeah, I, I mixed the English with the Shuri work so that Alden could react better. So I, yeah, you, you've heard about this, but yeah, if the, if the line was like, go get some pizza for us, I would say, go get some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and then Han Solo would get pizza for us. So that was great. Because <laughs> he was young and I was like old and experienced. I, I don't know when it flipped, so that he became our leader, you know? In the beginning, he used to be, I used to, you know, people used to look up to me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, unfortunately, this past year, uh, we did lose Peter Mayhew, 
and he was a great friend to Dragon Con. He came here a lot. Um, I, I saw that. I saw that one. He came here on the year. Uh, didn't he come here like right when before Force Awakens or something? I, I think so. He he comes more years than not. I think. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, I was. I was. I was terrified. Uh, I was like shocked to learn of Peter's passing, and uh, Peter was such a wealth of to to us all. Like he was. He was such a. Um, uh, gratuitous uh, person because he you know came and visited the fans and he was always he dedicated his life uh, to playing Chewbacca and being Chewbacca so it's really been it's really been a loss uh, losing him uh, do you have a favorite um, memory of a teaching moment or just time on set together I think it was it was just like he he was so uh, infused in the character that he knew what the character, he, he, was, he was saying to me, like when I first met him, he was saying like, Chewbacca is a mechanic. And I, I'd never thought about that. I thought Chewbacca was just a walking carpet. Uh, <laughs> but really, that's true. Chewbacca is a mechanic who can fix um, the hunk of junk. And, uh, and he's uh, more, more than that. And that, that really, that love that he felt for the character, really, that's the greatest gift that he gave me, I think was that that I could see that character because it was a lot of Chewbacca was how Peter Peter's body was shaped and how he moved and and that really to 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 hear hear that explained why why the why the why why Chewbacca turns like this instead of like that you know that was that was eye opening to me and helped me really grasp the essence of the character I think that enthusiasm has come across in you now so, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wanted to talk a little bit more about Solo uh, because one of my favorite parts of that movie is just uh, John Powell's score, and he gave mm. Chewbacca a theme. Mm -hmm. So what is it like to now have some theme music for your character? Oh, that's right. There was a theme, and he even sent me the sheet music for that theme. And I think I, I used to be able to hum it, but I, now I haven't listened. I haven't watched it in a, in a, in a while. Uh, yeah, that that was amazing to have a theme, and it was a good theme too. Can anyone remember how that theme went? Let's listen to it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Ask another question. I'll I'll put the theme up. Okay, cool. Uh, and this will be my last question. Oh, I don't have internet, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, I think it's like. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> They don't get to play it long, but... Exactly. Played by French horns. Probably. Just... <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a tiny oboe. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is going to be my last question, so if you guys have questions for Jonas, you can start lining up uh, right here in the middle, and uh, someone's going to be there with a the microphone in a second. But I think I've seen you uh, online interact with the hashtag MakeSolo2 happen. Oh, yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that there is a huge group of people that want to see that story continue with Han and Chewie and Kira and Crimson Dawn and all that. Exactly. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that campaign, that push online? Uh, any words of encouragement for the fans that are pushing so hard for it? Well, I'd like to say just quickly, make Solo 2 happen! <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, as much as anyone, I would like to see you know, continuation of Solo, but, but it depends on, you know, the movies, movies are, you know, you need some kind of box office uh, <laughs> proof for, for the sequels to happen, and, um, but hopefully in the future, you know, fa if fans are making enough noise, you know, I, I don't want to make too much noise because I like my job. I don't want to be... <laughs> I don't want them to think that I'm unhappy. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, I think uh, it would be it would be great if we, I don't know, maybe in the future, you know, with the Disney Plus and all kinds of opportunities, maybe we'll see something uh, in the future. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be a film. We could go Disney Plus. I mean, exactly. I'd take a book or a comic mm -hmm. at this point. Exactly. But, I mean, is there interest in the audience for Solo too? <laughs> Yeah, totally. I mean, 
it's, it's a, it, was, it was left in such a state, the story, that I just wanted to see how that continues. And we're we're going to have to see. But hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll see more. Uh, well, we have uh, some friends of the channel. They're a podcast, The Resistance Broadcast, and they are one of the big pushers behind uh, the hashtag online. Excellent. And uh, when they heard that I was getting to talk to you, they sent along a couple of Make Solo 2 shirts. Oh, okay. So there's a, <laughs> there's a 2XL for That's you. That's awesome. Thank you. And this one, I, I don't think it's going to fit, so I assume it's for your little one. Oh, but, really? <laughs> okay. He's been, his first words were, Make Solo 2 happen. <laughs> So it's amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we're going to open it up to fan questions, if anyone has one. And if, oh, there we go. When do you plan to introduce your son to Star Wars? I think when he's, I think when he's, he's about five or six, we'll watch the, the, the movies. Yeah. As young as I was. I said, son, you have to learn about you know, the evil dark side. Uh, so he knows what's coming, you know? So my question is this. If, if there was any chance you could be in any other fandom, any other series, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the DC Comic Universe, um, Lord of the Rings with the upcoming Amazon show, if there's any show or movie that you would want to be a part of, what would it be and why? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I'd say all of the above. Uh, hello. <laughs> but in terms of why Lord of the Rings, I just, I, I just think I'd make a great elf. <laughs> <laughs> little, you know, little, uh, little coarse, coarsely, more coarsely speaking elf, maybe, you know. Not so elegant, but maybe, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then, yeah, for, for Marvel, it would be, oh my god, it would be so cool to be able to shoot rockets or something. I don't know. Yeah, who wouldn't want to be? Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it all depends. I think I, what, I, what I will uh, also heavily try to do is go do more maybe suited roles, you know, to, to do. Because I, I, I just saw Shape of Water, and that was amazing to, to see to what... Uh, huh? Doug Jones. Doug Jones. Doug Jones is amazing. And uh, yeah, when you play a suit, suited character, you, it's, uh, you're giving, it's a gift to the movie, you know, I think. Will you be in The Mandalorian at all? Mandalorian, we're gonna have to wait and see, but I suppose it's gonna be, yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see. I don't wanna say. <laughs> hello? Hello, hello. Well, galactic um, insurance policies have been getting better and better, so Chewbacca has been getting treatment. <laughs> I was like, I always want to, when Chewie enters the room, when he's just walking, I want to, I want to try to make make him make him look, you know, walk like, uh, keep the continuation how Peter Peter would do it, and then, but if there's some adrenaline uh, infused moment where che Chewbacca has to, you know gets angry or has to do something, then I think he gets an extra kick from somewhere. And uh, he, he moves like a, like a, college, ball, a, a college ball player. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, I, I don't know, yeah, but, but I, I always try to keep it, you know, keep, keep that uh, uh, what is it? continuity, like keep it believable um, in terms of that but I don't know how well I do because I, sometimes I have too much fun running around on set and uh, then its continuity goes out the window. <laughs> no, but if, if you, uh, yeah, I, think, I, I believe, when I, that's why I'm always checking the takes. You know, I, I'm always, like, uh, when we're shooting, JJ hates it because I run to the uh, pr playback monitors to look at the take and he's like, don't you trust me? And I'm like, 
yeah. Because <laughs> I want to I wanna see how it looks and whether what I'm doing is working or not, and if I, if I want to do a different version of it. Uh, but usually I should just trust JJ because he's amazing. But, uh, but yeah, I can't help myself. So before I get to my question, can I ask how you pronounce your name? I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, Jonas Suotamo. But <laughs> for Americans, it's Jonas Suotamo. <laughs> yeah, because you guys don't have the O sound in any of your words. Unless, unless you count coffee. Coffee. Jonas <laughs> Suotamo. That's the closest. That's what a language expert, Andrew Jack, told me. He, he's a dialect coach uh, in, in some of our movies, and he told me that. The Americans have coffee. That's the closest thing. You want it suotamo. And that doesn't sound right, but it's close. <laughs> so we opt to for Yona, Jonas Suotamo for you Americans. <laughs> I re recommend going to Walmart and buying more words for your language. <laughs> because I don't know how long I can keep doing this. <laughs> I'm usually a very principled guy. And this double, you know, giving passes to you people, it's not. <laughs> Jonas Suotamo. Everybody say it with me. Jonas. Jonas Suotamo. That's pretty great. When we leave this room, there's going to be about, be about eight, 800 different versions of that name. <laughs> great, great stuff. Well, my name is Hayden. It's really nice to meet you, by the way. Very nice to meet you. Let's go to your question. So, <laughs> I'm just so kidding. out of all the Star Wars movies, I want to know which one is your most favorite and which one is your least favorite. My most favorite Star Wars movie is probably, it has to be Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, or Solo, one of those two. <laughs> and uh, my least favorite, that's tough. I guess the one I've saw the least amount of times would probably be Attack of the Clones, but it's not because it's my least favorite or something, but it's just, I just haven't seen it that many times. So I guess that counts as, as, as that. <laughs> But I love, I, love, I love all the new movies and the old movies. And I really loved uh, The Last Jedi. I really loved how, yeah. I loved how that movie not only was surprising, like every turn of that movie was really surprising, but also it, it really, it went to a different territory than other movies, that it was like, it was a movie about the rebels and what, if, what it means to be a rebel. And that, that was really courageous of Ryan, I think. Like, it was like them fighting, rebels fighting each other a little bit. And that, that was new and, and uh, different. And I really tip my hat for, for, for that approach because it was like, I don't know, it was like awesome to see that uh, uh, little, little quarreling uh, bet between, the, between the rebels uh, themselves. And that was new. That was not the question, but yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd put it in there. So, uh, Chewbacca has gotten to be most of the characters, but not all of them. Is there anyone that you would like him to antagonize? Like most of the characters in, that are living in the universe? Yes. In the galaxy? <laughs> I think Chewbacca should come to Dragon Con. He'll meet so many people here. <laughs> but uh, I think who. Chewbacca would like to meet. Hmm. I mean, let's start with him meeting some of more of his own kind. Okay? Chewbacca would like to meet more Wookiees, you know? And again, it's those, that Skywalker bunch always dragging him away. Uh, <laughs> Chewbacca, smuggle this over there. Oh, sure, you'll get to see your friends later, okay? Come on, Chewbacca. Remember life debt? Remember that, okay? <laughs> oh, take, pick up that box and let's jump into ship, okay? Let's go. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he's missing his friends, I think. <laughs> no, he's really liking it. The, the pay is good and... <laughs> he's got a bunch of people who can't speak his language, so he's loving it. <laughs> he's loving it. My question is, what do you do to get in character or something like that? 
I watch, I watch uh, the old Star Wars movies. That always gives me like a new added thing uh, for that. But then I've, I've done it so much for four movies that I feel like it's, I just sort of do this. <laughs> and uh, I'm in character. <laughs> Because the, the, yeah, yeah, I just, the only thing, when they put, put the mask up, I just look in the mirror, and I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> I guess I'm in Star Wars now. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much what I do. It's, <laughs> JJ has said that I make it look easy, and I guess so, because it's so, like, I love, I love playing another, Character. I love playing, especially Chewbacca, because he, Peter m created him and he was so memorable and he looked unlike a man in a suit. Because that look is, I, I never liked, you know, that you can see, like when you look at, look at a character in a movie, oh, that's a guy in a suit. Because there are some, some performances like that. I won't name any. So I like to make friends. <laughs> No, but that's what we always try to do, is not to make it look like a man in a suit. So that, that's what I'm going for. It's okay. All my answers are going to be, well, <laughs> you've, you've been here the whole time, so you know. How many times and how often do you get Chewbacca calls? Chewbacca, what? what? Not that often because I, I guess it has to do because I look so different. I walk very differently than what <laughs> the character walks. But if I would, if I would start walking on the streets, <laughs> you know, maybe they would get more excited. <laughs> but I have the I have the benefit of not, you know, uh, I'm very distant from my character in that sense. Which is, I don't know, is it good? <laughs> I guess in here, I, I probably should switch to Chewbacca mode whenever I come to these cons, so that people recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, as you, yeah, your answer was genius. Uh, your, your question was genius, my answer, yeah, you know. Um, right. It wasn't actually, I didn't do the, the coaching for those guys. They were, they were taught by the movement coach. What was his, uh, Paul? His name was Paul, but no, wait, was it? I can't remember. Anyway, so their movement coach taught them. I, I should know his name. I know him very well, but I can't remember his name right now. Uh, yeah, they were. Say what? I, I'm, they were kind of they were prisoners, so they were in chains, and I, I went in and saved them, and it was dark. It was so dark in on those caves. I couldn't really I couldn't really see. They 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 never got to like, we never had a runway for them to come out and just perform their. <laughs> <laughs> performed there too, but so I never got that. I couldn't be out there. Hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, they were just. They their their hair needed badly needed some moisturizer lotion. Uh, they had yeah they they had suffered and uh, as you could see, uh, compared to Chewbacca's shiny hair, they had it pretty rough and uh, and hopefully. They got hair treatment right after they escaped <laughs> escaped that planet, you know, after that uh, or, uh, after that coup and escape, you know. That's what I hope. I wish them all the best. <laughs> they were great guys. They were great guys. But I I could I can't say um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you think that Chewie should they should subtitle what Chewie says so we can actually see what he's facing without having to try and read it from other people's reflections. Well, I was sure that they were going to do that in solo, but they, they said it's some kind of a taboo. You can't subtitle Chewbacca. I don't know. Maybe it will change when I get more lines and, 
and the moral responsibility. Uh, I think I would like to see subtitles, but then again, I guess it's kind of cool that he doesn't have because he, he's a special, special it's, uh, he holds a special place and, uh, and it's, been, it's been established that he's the way he is, you know, just looking around and saying, yeah, answering yes or no questions. Actually, I think I got it the other day doing an interview. I think Chewbacca, in the script, it's always uh, written out if the Chewbacca, what he's saying, is more than a yes or no. So if I'm saying, like, what are you doing? Then it's subtitled in the, um, in the script. Like it's put in there as a regular character. I'm always very, very proud during those moments. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an actor with lines. <laughs> But yeah, I would like to see subtitles. I'd like to see everything. I'm like a, I'm like a dog. You don't leave me a bowl that's full of food. You, you uh, ration the food, because I, I eat it all. Uh, I'm just a fellow Penn State alum. Thank you. Let's go, Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say Penn State? <laughs> yes. Excellent. <laughs> Love Penn State. You mentioned uh, mushroom hunting earlier. Are, do you have any other like, secret hidden talents that, uh, that nobody else knows about? Like, are you a semi pro and state? Oh. You know, like, I see drop a, you know, drop a thing in a half pipe or something. Um, I never skateboarded, but I'm, I'm really into music. I like, whenever I go to, go to Barnes and Noble, I just devour all the music books. And, uh, and then I bring them home and my, my wife is like, why are you buying all these books? I don't know, I just, want, I just love music and, uh, and uh, like the theory and everything. And what else, what else? I have so many hobbies. Uh, I don't know. I've, d I've used to d do some programming and uh, all kinds of, you know, all kinds of stuff uh, I'm into. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. So other, um, the mushrooms, I'm interested in the mushrooms because I want to know more. I, I have, I've never gone out to the woods and found them, but I would, <laughs> my godmother, my godmother uh, is, uh, is great. She knows all the, all the mushrooms. So I've always been like, maybe I should learn the mushrooms too. But it's a lot of work to, to look at the mushrooms and going out to the woods and finding them. Yeah, so maybe enough about the mushrooms <laughs> for now. <laughs> It'd be cool to know more, but uh, no time. Yeah. So solo. Me too. Um, <laughs> Some of you may know I'm a big fan of this idea. Um, <laughs> I get so emotional. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I haven't seen. I haven't completely seen the first one. I looked at the beginning and I was like, maybe I shouldn't watch this. <laughs> I was afraid that it would somehow ruin Star Wars for me. So I, I, I stayed away. Huh? Yeah. It, yeah, wouldn't it? Like, like I don't want to be influenced. I don't want look at, to look at that, which is forbidden. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, when they first sat me down, you're going to play Chewbacca, but listen. You can never watch this movie. <laughs> no, that didn't happen, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it was a different time, you know. A lot of mushrooms. <laughs> huh? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Cool, cool one piece. I wish it came in my size. Actually, I, we had one stand-in in the Last Jedi who went and bought, from Primark, he went and bought one of those uh, chewy one pieces. It was great, it was great. And then he had, he had a mask of, of like the first uh, mock-up mask that they made, which, uh, okay, they had used it for the stand-in, and he was wearing that, and he was wearing that one piece, and the mask was so disgruntled and everything, so they called it the Crack Chewy. <laughs> Hilarious when he came on board. Yeah, hilarious. Well, you see how tall I am, right? 
Yeah. Six foot six. Six foot six. Amazing. Thank you. Me too. I was uh, I was like trying to uh, convince them that Kira and Chewbacca, you know, would make a perfect fit. <laughs> no one bought into that. <laughs> and Amelia never talked to me after that. <laughs> Just kidding. So. So, such unique movement to that. You talked about how, how you learned all of that. And I'm sure you studied him and you learned from him quite a bit while uh, you were filming, learning to take over the role. Was there a moment, can you tell us about that moment when you like, I think I got this. Like, what I did just felt so Peter, but also feels so Wookiee. Like, do you know of, can you pinpoint that moment where it's like, I'm Chewbacca now? Right, right. Well, it was some, some, some time during The Force Awakens, but I can't t tell which scene. <laughs> but it was like, it was like, yeah, Harrison was there, and you know, you're, I ran to the monitors to check, and it was, looked pretty amazing, uh, I gotta say. <laughs> I mean, here I am, put your buck. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was one of those first, first days of, of filming Force Awakens, but yeah, it was, it was fantastic because you could you could just you believed whatever whatever was on the screen, and that's uh, yeah. Whenever JJ stayed silent and didn't say anything, you knew it looked good. When it came to Chewbacca, you know, whenever he says Ah, oh, Chewie, can you? Uh, you know, there's you gotta you, it's not working, and you gotta fix it, and then and it's usually you know you gotta do less of a certain thing and keep it simple because Chewbacca is a very, you know, stationary character or like he doesn't, the less is more in terms of Chewbacca. So, so but it's always, uh, uh, it's always like that. I need to, whenever we start a new film, uh, it takes, it takes a little while to get it, get it clicking. And, uh, and that's, that's when I know that I'm, I always, I'm always honing it, I think. Because it's just uh, Chewbacca is such a specific thing. If you try to do something, if you try to do new things, uh, you gotta uh, make sure that it works. I think. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't be more specific. Hi. I The great Pablo Hidalgo has said, always release order. So what, what order they were released is, and I think there's great wisdom in that. And he's a wise man. And uh, he knows. <laughs> Go in peace. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. Right. So what's that dichotomy like? Right. I just, um, whenever the cameras are on, I'm like, oh, I'm a little bit wiser now than... <laughs> so I can't, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thing, but it doesn't, like when the cameras are stopped, uh, when the cameras stop, you know, I, then I'm just me, you know? So there, it's, uh, uh, for, especially in solo, it was really, it was really weird to play, you know, someone who's 190 years old and then these human, human characters. But then you just kind of keep it the way Chewie would be. Because 20 years is nothing, right? So, but he, he'd just been released from a long imprisonment. So he was kind of wary or he wasn't, wasn't quite sure where he was going to be. So all these things, I try to, try to make them, uh, the continuity of that to be believable. But, but I think Chew, Chewbacca is not so interested. He doesn't have, an, have a large ego. 
he's just a little bit stubborn sometimes, and, and he wants a lot of food. And uh, <laughs> those things affect more than whether someone is uh, uh, younger than him. Chewbacca sees things differently, I think. Whereas me, you know, I'm always, if I'm older than somebody, they'll hear it, you know? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I've never, actually, in basketball, there's a lot of age hierarchy when you enter, come into a team. And I never really, I'm more, always more been of a, a merit, merit, merit type of guy. I like, if someone has a good idea, we should listen to him, rather than uh, have a strict hierarchy of whoever is oldest will get to say how things are. So, I guess I'm a bit of a rebel. Give me a good idea. Give us your uh, elevator pitch for a Chewbacca Central uh, Disney Plus show. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks for putting me on the spot here. <laughs> we'll, we'll call Captain Kenny tomorrow. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, now? <laughs> I think. I think I've always said this. It would be cool to have some sort of a, I don't know, some sort of kind of a, I would like to see, would it be interesting if there was a, like a natural catastrophe and Chewbacca saves the day? You know, kind of like a volcano with Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> Chewbacca saving people from volcanoes. <laughs> Multiple volcanoes, let's make it interesting. <laughs> 17 volcanoes. <laughs> Chewbacca saves the day. Hops up from on lava stones and saves people. All right. Um, in the scene where Han dies, as we all know, mm. what is going through Chewie's head pointing that bowcaster at what essentially is God? Exactly. Well, I think he was blinded by the loss and the rage. So I think he was aiming to, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, that's, a, that's a really interesting thing. Um, yeah, the only thing is he didn't, he didn't uh, hit him lethally. So um, I don't know if that influenced it. I think he was trying to. <laughs> yeah. I'm going back and forth because I don't know. Uh, I think it was, he was, yeah, definitely uh, when he sees, I think he, he still thinks that the situation is under control, that Han is going to get something out of Ben and it's gonna, all going to be okay and Ben is going to come to the ship. But what? What is he doing? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's for us to in, interpret what, what happened in there. Thank you. Thank you. But it was a, it was a really, uh, <laughs> everything was really quiet that day we were shooting that. You didn't want to make any jokes and you just wanted to get it done because you didn't want to be the one who, who disturbs that um, uh, quiet. Uh, it was a closed set that day and you didn't want to be the one who, who says something dumb and, and uh, you know, because it was, yeah, it was really, it was really, uh, it was really heavy because because uh, we all knew what what a secret it was, and but it also, you know, you didn't want right, to ruin the take or disturb anyone's uh, concentration. Is it is it the Invisible Man next? So, <laughs> I, I, what's your question? I I, I think that's our, <laughs> our time. Pretty excellent, much. Uh, excellent. Looks like we've got one minute left, so. I've got one more question. Since Let's all hold, about... hold our breaths for one minute. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've got one last question for you. In The Last Jedi, when Rey is leaving the Falcon and she says that uh, if Chewie sees Finn before she does, Finn says something, or uh, Chewie says something and she says, yes, that's perfect. Do you know what Chewie said? It's going to have to be a secret because I don't right. know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I, I have no idea. I would love to know. Let's ask Ryan about that because, <laughs> what did he say? Yeah, I don't think it was ever decided. What the, I'm sorry. Did <laughs> I ruin someone's? Uh, no. 
I was just curious. Yeah, I think it's better if it's like a secret, you know? Maybe it was something like, good to see you, or, <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> that is perfect. Something All right. like that. I that, think that would be great. That's what I would write <laughs> if I was writing these. <laughs> well, that's our time. Uh, Jonas, thank you so much for doing this. Um, if you didn't get your question answered today, Jonas is on two more panels this week. Uh, there's another one tomorrow at 4 and Sunday at 10. Excellent. Thank so, you so much, yeah. guys.